Alrighty, everybody. This is Pastor Mike Burns uh, from Florida, and it's Friday, uh, December the 27th, 2019, and this is the conclusion of another week of God's healing word. As you know, every Friday I come and I teach on stewardship, financial stewardship, and today we're going to continue that as we do every Friday. We'll take a break from God's healing word about physical illness. So I would encourage you to go back and watch the past shows uh, last Monday through uh, Thursday and uh, enjoy the teaching I'll do today because I, I want you to know, you know, Paul talked about it in Ephesians, in Philippians, the fourth chapter, about he himself experiencing what he called a financial affliction. You know, we just uh, came through the Christmas season and uh, they're still tallying up uh, what uh, the uh, vendors and stores and uh, internet companies, what they've made. <clears throat> and uh, supposedly, uh, this is another record-breaking year of the billions upon billions upon billions of dollars that have been spent by consumers, which is a, a strong signal that our economy is doing well and that people have uh, expendable cash. And uh, so I think it's just a wonderful, you know, situation in that respect. But at the same time, people are more interested in blessing one another, or giving gifts to one another, than they, understand, than they are in, in giving to God and to his work in the earth that needs to be supported by believers everywhere. Now, today I'm going to be talking to you about being faithful in finances is actually the least uh, of all the tests that you could go through in life. Financial stewardship, being faithful in finances, is the least that uh, you could go through. You know, I want to make a, a comment here, if I can, at the beginning of this teaching today. Let me pray first as we approach the Word of God. Father, thank you for this teaching today. Thank you for people that will have ears to hear open minds, and receptive hearts, Father God. That you'll make my tongue as the pen of a ready writer. You'll think through my mind and speak through my lips to these, your people. And I thank you that there'll be no offense to the Word of God, especially when it comes to the sensitive area of our finances. But one thing we do know in the Word of God is that we have been called to be stewards. While we are owners of really nothing, we are stewards of everything that comes from your hand. So I thank you today for uh, making the Word of God clear to the people. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Now, every time our country has uh, gone into recessions or even depressions, uh, inflation, different financial troubles that we've experienced, as a matter of fact, just several years back, we had what was known as a housing crisis here in America. Um, it's always been the result, these crises that I've just mentioned, it's been the result of our, our people and our government violating biblical principles regarding things like finances. See, loans were made to people that were not in a position to pay those loans back. Here, the fact is that banks were required by legislation, and this is important, to grant loans to people regardless of their ability to pay it back. Basically, what our government was trying to do was to make us all equal by making home ownership available across the spectrum of our culture. Now, you might think, well, what's wrong with that? Well, it created what was known as this housing crisis where homes were foreclosed upon, people uh, were evicted, uh, children's lives were turned upside down, uh, people had to go back to renting, and, and it just became a mess in our country. It's been the cause of all the financial troubles that we've had on a national level here in our country. But also, financial problems occur on the smaller level which is the lives that you and I are living on a daily basis. And I would say that when we are suffering 
uh, from the sin, which is really the denial of God's right of possession over our lives. And we do things our way instead of doing them the way that he would have us to do that, that we are really creating these situations of hardship financially uh, that we ought not to be going through. You see, I want you to turn in your Bibles, if you will, to Luke chapter 16, because we're talking about the Bible. And, uh, you know, Monday through Thursday, I teach on God's healing word based on what the scriptures say, what Jesus has already done. But I'm also teaching every Friday, I call it Giving Friday, because we want to give you the opportunity to show into our ministry, which you can see over my left shoulder. Uh, I have all that information there. You can text to give uh, the words MJBMIN to 45777 or visit our website from uh, the desktop version of our website. Then you'll see the giving tab in the upper right hand corner where you can make your gifts today. Now, in Luke 16, verse 10, this is Jesus speaking. And he says this, He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. Now, many people have thought that this is speaking about uh, working your way up from the bottom to the top by being faithful. And this is a truth to a point, but it goes much deeper than that. Look what he goes on to say, Jesus does in verse 11 down through verse 13. If therefore you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches? And if you have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God, and you cannot serve mammon. Now, Jesus could not be clearer uh, in this portion of Scripture because he's talking about money. Now, the word mammon, let me read this to you, help you is a Chaldee, Syriac, and Punic uh, word like Plutus for the money god, which is actually a demon god. Now, the slave of Mammon will obey Mammon while pretending to obey God. Uh, That's what Robertson Word Pictures says. Now, in other words, they won't even realize the self-deception that they are in as it's like a drug or a spell that's cast upon them. Money is like a drug addiction. For instance, people that are gamblers, they can't really stop on their own. They've got this addiction to gambling and having to win the next big jackpot or the horse race or whatever. See, faithfulness in the area of finance, think about this now, is the least level of faithfulness when it comes to being a steward. Now, this is a powerful statement that I've just made to you. When I say that finances is the least uh, in the area of faithfulness when it comes to money, if you ask most Christians about faithfulness and what would be the least area of stewardship, they might surmise that it might be uh, in the area of the new birth, since that is the beginning place for us as as Christians. Or perhaps it would be healing because it's only for this temporal life that we'll live maybe to 120 years. See, Jesus said in Luke 16 and verse number 10, He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. Now, if you go to Mark, the 10th chapter, in verse 17, reading down to verse 22, again, listen uh, to what Jesus uh, says to this young man who comes to him. And when he was gone forth in verse 17 of Mark 10, uh, and when he was gone forth in the way, into the way, there came one running and kneeled to him and asked him, Good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? It's funny how 
Uh, many people are just like this young man. They ask the God, say, what can I do to be healed? What can I do to be prosperous? What can I do uh, to be saved? And uh, this is one of the, this man, young man wanted to know what he could do to uh, receive or inherit eternal life. And Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? There is none good but one, and that is God. You know the commandments, do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness or lie, defraud not, honor your father and mother. And he answered Jesus and said to him, Master, all these things have I done, or have I observed from my youth. Then Jesus beheld him. I like this. He loved him. <laughs> Probably with a little bit of pity mixed in there. And said unto him, one thing you lack. Now can you imagine coming to the Lord and asking him what you could do to inherit eternal life? And you've done all the commandments. Now Jesus was answering his question based on Old Testament law. He wasn't answering his question based on New Testament grace. But he said, you just lack in one thing. <laughs> Boy, I tell you what, imagine if he said, well, you're lacking about 18 things. I mean, there's 613 commands in the Old Testament. He could have said, well, you're, you're lacking about 225 of the things that need to be done. But Jesus didn't say that. He said, you're only lacking one thing. Boy, I tell you, you talk about being close. He can't get any closer to this than this than other than uh, possessing what Jesus uh, was providing here. So Jesus said, you like one thing, go thy way, sell what you have, and give to the poor, and you shall have treasure in heaven, and then come, take up the cross, and follow me. And the man, young man was sad at that saying, and went away grieved. Notice his statement, for he had great possessions. Literally, you could say this, that actually great possessions had him. Now, if someone came running to this altar today and said passionately, good pastor and teacher, uh, what must that do to be saved? Most of us would lack the discernment that Jesus exercised here. You see, while his words were right, his motives were not. Jesus wasn't going to allow this rich young ruler to just elevate him, uh, elevate himself to a high position. He needed to acknowledge Jesus as God, as Lord. His failure to do so was a great indication that this man wanted a list to, of things to do when God wanted his heart. See, the issue here. Uh, was that possessions were controlling his heart and his life. So Jesus gave him a way out of that kind of bondage to the fear of not having all he needed by telling him to go sell it all and give it away. See, this man didn't recognize Jesus as being God, but only as an exalted teacher. He could not see Jesus being able to speak to someone else who would obey God, speaking uh, to them to give back to this young ruler. You could deduce them that Jesus was trying to help this young man, but his failure to acknowledge Jesus as Lord, which means that his word should carry a whole other level of importance, but in this young man's mind, it simply didn't. Here's a fact. Other religions today acknowledge Jesus Christ as a rabbi, as a teacher, as a prophet, and even a healer and miracle worker. That is not enough. Listen, listen to me. He must be seen through our eyes as Lord and Master. That's what he said in John 14, 6. Jesus said to them, I am the way, the truth, the life, and no man comes unto the Father but by me. You see, Jesus is not just a way, a truth, or a life. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Can you say amen to that? There is no other name the Bible says 
uh, that's been given under heaven, whereby we must be saved. So coming back to Mark 10, verse 20 and 21, and he answered and said unto him, Master, no more good. All these things have I observed from my youth. And then in verse 21, Jesus answered, and beholding him, he loved him and said unto him, One thing you lack, go your way, sell whatever you have, and give to the poor, and you shall have treasure in heaven, and come take up the cross and follow me. See, this young rich ruler claimed to have kept all the commandments from his youth up, yet Jesus showed him the condition of his heart. He told him this with a heart of love for him, uh, and for the young man. Now, you see the same thing over in Exodus 20, 17, because it talks about the Ten Commandments and about one of them about uh, not uh, desiring or being greedy about your neighbor's possessions and things like that. Now, in Mark 10, verse 29, Jesus answered and said, Truly I say to you, there is no man that has left house or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake in the Gospels, but he shall receive a hundredfold now in this time houses and brethren and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and in the world to come eternal life. See, this man here could not go all the way with Jesus. Why? You know, he couldn't go with him all the way in this area of his life because of the condition of his heart. See, how people manage and use money is a thing that reveals what is in a person's heart. It exposes literally what is in their heart. What's amazing is how certain people who talk about the need to help the poor actually do very little personally to help them. Those who have hundreds of thousands or even millions of dollars actually give less than 1% to the Lord's work. Now think about this. What they're doing is acting like the money they have is theirs to do with as they please. But you have to remember what we said at the beginning of the stewardship teaching over 10 weeks ago. We said stewarding money is the least of all areas of faithfulness required by the law of stewardship. Yet people today are saying this. They say they want to trust God for the healing or their eternal home in heaven. To me, this is an attitude of arrogance. This is where people have an inflated opinion of themselves believing that while they have not learned to be faithful in stewarding finances, they have deceived themselves into believing they can trust God in other areas as well. You see, money is, and things that we value down here on earth, I would say that they're not quite as valued in heaven. For instance, the Bible says that streets of heaven are paved with gold. Here we use asphalt. <laughs> but in heaven, you might think, well, gee, if we ever on earth started paving our streets in real gold, you, you might say that's you know uh, luxurious or it's a it's a waste of a precious metal like that. You know they say it's you pay over a thousand dollars for an ounce of gold nowadays. Well, let me say something too. In heaven, they don't put that kind of value on things. I mean, they use rubies and diamonds and all kinds of sapphires and things. And they put it in the gates, you know, and there's the beauties of, of the vegetation that the Bible describes in heaven as well. You see, we put value on things down here that we want to hoard up to ourselves. But if you have anything, whether it's a lot or just a little, God's requiring you to be faithful in that which is the least. And let me just say again what Jesus is saying here, that when it comes to faithfulness, the least to be faithful over is the area of money. It's something that will be, you need to realize that if you get that area of your life right, then other areas in your life will come into balance and be blessed. That's what Billy Graham said. It seems that if you get your financial life right, 
all the other priorities of life will fall into place. Well, I believe that to be true for me, and I believe it to be true for you as well. Are you going to be a faithful steward over your money? Because God's given you what you have. He's given you the intelligence, the education. Uh, He's given you the expertise. He's given you breath in your lungs, beating heart. God has given you all the things you have to that have you have acquired much of the wealth you have today, whether it's blue collar, white collar, it doesn't matter to me what kind of work you've done. God has given you that ability to make it. Now you're a steward over those things, and you have to be a faithful steward. God says in His Word in First Corinthians four that moreover in stewards, they must be found faithful. God's looking for you to realize that you're an owner of nothing, but a steward of everything. So stewarding money is the least of all areas of faithfulness required by this principle or this law of stewardship. Praise God. See, that's what I want you to hear today on this given Friday. Listen, I have resources here I'd like you to invest in. Uh, first, here is my uh, first book here, Discover the Life You Were Born to Live, Dare to Make a Difference. This is a 230-page book. With We just released this new companion study guide that's part of a seminar I teach. and I taught it up in New York here uh, just last month. I'd love to come to churches across the country and teach this seminar to your people, how they can discover the life they were born to live. If you'd like me to come, and minister on a Saturday to four hour seminar with lunch. There is a cost, we could talk about that. But also, I would uh, teach it on Saturday, still work for Sunday morning, service of services. And then Sunday night, host a great miracle and healing rally. I call it a power weekend. And I'd love to come and teach it there at your uh, church pastor. And so uh, maybe you want to get together with some other churches for the seminar or the healing meeting on Sunday night. I would love to come, and I'd ask that if you want me to come, go to our website, mjbministries.org, and there you'll see the MJB Ministries drop down. At the bottom is request a speaking uh, meeting, and then fill out the form, submit it, and we will be in contact with you. I'd also suggest to pastors today that I have a book, my newest book here called Church Happens, what your pastor needs from the people they lead. I'd be happy to send this to you free of charge as a PDF file, and I would need your email address. So you could email me your address to mjbcjf at gmail.com. That's my email. Send me your email, Pastor, and I'll send you this PDF copy with bulk ordering information of what this book for your people. But I want you to read the book first and it's entirely taken 45 minutes at the most. As you're laying in bed at night, you can read it in the early in the morning in your devotional time. This book will be an eye opener to you and I believe it will be a blessing to your life, glory to God. And then you'll want to order enough copies of it for your people. You get a discount depending on the number of books you order. Get it today. We have a website for this called churchhappensbook.com. Discoverthelifebook.com is also there. It's also at mjbministries.org. And so uh, please check it out today, and we'd be delighted for that. You know, we're coming up on the end of 2019. I can hardly believe it. Would you consider a year in giving? Now, I'd say just you give to your church, other ministries, but maybe there'd be room for MJB Ministries there for my wife and I as we've spent 35 years pastoring in Long Island. Now we're in a new phase of ministry, and we need your assistance. Go to MJ, text the words MJBMIN to 45777, or visit our desktop version of our website, and you'll see in the upper right-hand corner uh, an online giving tab. We would really appreciate people responding today. Uh, Maybe you're looking for a year in giving, uh, for your business or for your home or for uh, even your ministry, perhaps. Sow that seed and we'll believe God with you for a supernatural harvest in the name of Jesus. Praise God. This is Pastor Mike Burns uh, telling you that we love you. And next week we're going to be mentioning about New Year's. 
But thank you for your opportunity to give and you'll take that today and help us in the work that we're endeavoring to do. It takes money to print books. It takes money to distribute them. I have other books already written I need to print. I have a book on healing that I want to print, glory to God. And I ask you to uh, help with all of these books because we're getting low on supplies now and we need to print more and it costs money to print these. And uh, even though they're available as digital downloads, uh, the Discover the Life book and the Church Happens book are both available for all digital devices. We still are printing them because, you know, people want hard copies or, or soft copies. They can read and hold it in their hand. And so thank you for helping us today. Again, text the word MJBMIN to 45777. Or visit our desktop version of our website, mjbministries.org. And you should see an online giving tab in the upper right-hand corner. You can become a regular partner or just give a one-time gift there. Thank you uh, for recognizing us as a viable ministry you want to support. And we'd appreciate that in Jesus' name. By the way, we also have a new address. Uh, I haven't changed it on the website yet because we just moved, as you know. And I'm just getting things set up here. Our new address is 4617 Sable Key Drive, Bradenton, Florida, uh, 34203. I'll post that here uh, next week in our weekly broadcast. All right, God bless you. And we look forward to seeing you next week. Get ready for a brand new year, 2020. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.